Hi everyone, welcome to Carpe Diem Sailing. My name is Marco, I'm a Sail Canada cruising instructor, and in today's video I'll be talking about how to dress for sailing in fine weather and foul. Welcome to episode 31, Dressing for Sailing. For those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, summer is just around the corner. And for some, that might mean some early season sailing. Uh, for others, it might mean waiting for the summer. Either way, I thought it might be a good time to do a video on dressing appropriately for sailing. And when I mean appropriately for sailing, I don't mean dressing for the yacht club. So let's get into it. The first thing that um, I want to talk about is the way, what I'm, where I'm coming from with this is protection. So most of the dressing appropriately is protection from the elements. So sun, wind, rain, spray, cold, that sort of thing. We're going to start with the summer and then we're going to have another segment later in the video talking about winter sailing and how to dress for, for winter sailing. So for summer, for me, the number one thing I'm looking for from protection is from the sun, right? Um, we have, everybody knows about skin cancer and all the rest of it. Um, and so we're looking for protection from the sun. Generally speaking, for me, what that means is shade, um, so covering up or overhead protection, and sunscreens. Um, awnings, biminis, if you happen to have that uh, luxury on your boat, they're great. Uh, they will give you some protection from um, the sun above, especially in the tropics. They don't do much for reflection, which is also a problem. So even though you might have a bimini above, you still need to think about protecting yourself, protecting your eyes, protecting your skin, exposed from even from the reflection. Years ago, I was hiking in the mountains in June, and I was wearing a baseball cap, and I didn't put sunscreen on, um, and it was in the snow, and I, it was amazing how much of a burn I had. And it was all burned from underneath. It's the first time I'd ever experienced a sunburn from reflection on the snow, but it can be a problem. So even with a bimini overhead, be careful. Um, you still need to protect yourself from the sun. So let's talk about sunscreens. Sunscreens, pretty controversial topic these days. Um, I like to think that I'm, I keep myself fairly well educated, uh, but again, looking at the information on the internet, who knows you know, what's true, what's not. So trying to sift through all of that can be a real challenge. So what I've found so far for me personally is that there are definitely chemicals in the sunscreen. So oxybenzone is the other one and octinoxate. Those two chemicals right now are pretty hot topics. Hawaii, as of January 1st, was the first uh, state to ban the sale of any sunscreens with those two products in them. And the main reason for that is because of reef, coral reef bleaching. Um, Florida apparently is following close behind. REI has not sold uh, sunscreens with oxybenzone for some time. About six years ago, I was actually diving in Mexico and uh, any sunscreens were banned. All sunscreens were banned on the dive boats at that time. So they're being you know, pretty progressive. Uh, Yacht Racing Life, I'll have a link down below. Uh, did an article on uh, yacht racing sailors who are out there quite a bit and what they're now doing, which is actually covering up. They're getting away from the sunscreen um, and finding the covering up is safer for the oceans. The sunscreens potentially can be toxic and uh, they're just messy to deal with. So for me, um, I'm not a real big fan of sunscreen. Even the mineral-based sunscreens, the titanium and the zinc oxide, which are considered to be somewhat reef safe, um, they're messy, they're white, they're chalky. I don't I don't really like them. So I don't really have much left uh, if I'm not gonna use sunscreen. This is my own personal choice. Look into it, decide whether sunscreens are right for you. Uh, talk to your dermatologist. Um, I talked to my dermatologist, obviously. She believes that they are very important and SPF 50 minimum is what she's, she's recommending. So make, you know, do your homework, decide what's right for you. For me, I try to limit it and I try to cover up as much as I can. So, like I said, not a big fan of sunscreen. However, what I am a big fan of um, is certainly protecting my vision. And um, so, sunglasses. So, these sunglasses are right now, they wrap around, which is a nice feature. They um, have UVA and UVB protection 100%. That's the thing to look for. It's 100% coverage, 100% protection from UVA and UVB rays. These might 
be kind of stylish and they are 100% UVA and UVB uh, protected, but they're kind of open on the sides and so you can still get some glare coming through there. So the wraparounds are nice. These are actually some of my favorites. Uh, they're polarized um, and the polarized, contrary to popular belief, um, doesn't necessarily offer you better or more protection from UVA and UVB. What it does is it reduces glare, it allows you to see better, and um, it can cut um, eye strain. All right, good pair of sunglasses. Definitely, you want to be having that high on your list of priorities. So next, we're going to start about we talk about clothing. So starting with clothing, we're going to start at the top and work our way down. So this is um, a Tilly hat. Uh, Tilly was designed by, these hats were designed by a Canadian called Alex Tilly many years ago, a sailor who was looking for a better hat for sailing. So he came up with a prototype at that time. Uh, it was cotton canvas, it had a smaller brim. And then from then he's launched many other designs as well as adventure clothing and that sort of thing. Um, the main feature of the Tilly hat is that it's guaranteed for life. Apparently you can leave it in your will and if it wears out, they replace them free. I had this one for many years. It's nowhere near being worn out. I don't know if that's still the case. I have a link to their site down below. You can take a look and see if Tilly still offers that. It's quite a, quite a cult, cult following all around the world. Um, this particular hat is, uh, I quite like it. It's very light, it's synthetic, it dries quickly. It's cool, it's got some aeration around the crown. It's got foam built into the top here so it won't sink if it does fall in the water and hopefully it won't fall in the water if you use the, uh, the straps. So the nice thing about this is um, that it does offer, you know, pretty good protection all the way around and it's quite light and quite, quite, quite comfortable. The ball cap, the baseball cap, definitely very, very popular but extremely limited in protection. Essentially it protects a little bit of your forehead, maybe your eyebrows and that's it. So yeah, it's better than nothing but not great for looking for good sun protection. And then we have the baseball cap with the little flap here, which I call the French Foreign Legionnaire's hat. So basically it's essentially a ball cap with a fairly wide brim and, uh, and this little flap at the back and uh, covers your ears, covers the back of your neck. And then there's a little strap here to hold it on your, on your head. Um, a lot of fishermen use them, They're pretty common if you're gonna be sitting out in the sun um, all day long, the bone fishermen, that sort of thing. They're quite popular with, with them. There is a company called Soldari. I have a link down below and they actually have a version of this that has a flap that comes across. So it covers your entire face. So that with sunglasses, you've got really good all around protection. So the other thing is you might've seen that picture in the yacht racing life where the racer in there had this tube covering his face as well as sunglasses and he was wearing a ball cap. So completely covered. Something that you might want to think about is just a, a bandana that might cover you if you choose to go that way. It's a cheap, easy option to deal with with that. Um, or you can go with that full face wrap. So moving on down, we're going to talk about shirts. So this shirt, golf shirts, polo shirts, they can, they come, they do come with UPF, so ultraviolet protection factor, they call it UPF clothing. Um, they, they do protect somewhat, but again, arms are bare, the neck is bare, um, so limited, but better than, than nothing. This shirt is a UPF Factor 50 shirt. This is from Patagonia. It's long sleeved, it's synthetic, it's extremely light and silky. It's very cool in the summertime. And then it's got this neat feature here where the collar actually flips up and then another part of the collar flips up. So you can flip that up and you can protect quite a bit up into your neck. So for full coverage protection from your neck down to your wrists um, in the summertime, it's very cool, um, very comfortable travel shirt. Going further down, we have these shorts, which are again, um, good to the knees kind of thing. Uh, they're quick dry, they're very comfortable. They have lots of pockets on them for doodads and rigging knives and things like that. Um, but again, they only cover it to the knees. So if it's a very sunny day, you need to have coverage. You can get longer pants down to the ankles, which brings us down to footwear. So with footwear, you've got your traditional moccasin boat shoe like this. Uh, what you're looking for is a, a sole actually designed to be a deck shoe sole. So most of them, and Sperry designed this years ago, um, has the siping. So siping are these little 
cuts in the rubber to help you stick or have better grip on wet decks. So look for a proper deck shoe with a proper design deck shoe sole. Um, these moccasin types are very popular. Um, what I find is I also like the comfort. I find these actually more comfortable than the moccasins. The moccasin types might be a bit more stylish, but I find that these uh, running shoe styles, again, these are Heli Hansen. Um, they are, uh, again, designed as boat shoes. Uh, Heli Hansen has a few designs. Um, these are extremely cool. They're sort of meshy. Um, so in the summertime, they're, they're great. Uh, they dry quickly, they're cool, they have good grip. And what I like about these is I find them a bit more comfortable, as I said, than the moccasins, but um, it does, they do give me a bit more support. So if you are out there, it's 20 knots in the summer and you're needing a bit more support when you're moving around the boat, the running shoe style is quite popular. Now, I just wanna mention something quickly. I showed these Heli Hansen shorts. I'm wearing a Heli Hansen shirt. I got Heli Hansen um, running shoes and you'll see some more Heli Hansen stuff down the line. I do have a pro deal with Heli Hansen, but they're not, I'm not sponsored in any way. I'm not doing this as a professional, um, you know, commercial for Heli Hansen. I do like their products. I do get a pro deal. Um, and I just want to make sure that that's disclosed, but um, I also will not endorse any product that I personally don't believe in. So I'll be doing gear reviews. I've already done one on that crew overboard recovery system. And I'll, you know, I'll be honest, if it works, I'll show you how it works and why I like it. And if it doesn't, then you know, I'll let you know that too. So moving on, um, there are sandals. Let's go to this sandal here. Sandals and flip-flops. They do have some that do have siping and deck shoe soles. The problem I find is that they can be quite hazardous. And what I mean by that is that this little section of the toe here can actually, and I have caught myself that way, I don't wear sandals on the boat anymore. This will actually catch on things and can be quite a significant tripping hazard. So I would absolutely avoid any sandals or flip flops that have open toes like this, um, no protection to your toes whatsoever, and they can really be a tripping hazard. That's my opinion, you choose for yourself. If you do wanna wear sandals, then these are from Keen. They do have a closed toe, uh, don't have quite the same protection of the toes of a full closed shoe, but they do give you more of a sandal without that tripping hazard going on in the front there. All right, so that's it for shoes and, and uh, clothing for warm weather. But even in the summertime, you get out on the water, it could be windy, might be raining, um, you still need a little bit of protection. So a lightweight windbreaker or a Gore-Tex jacket um, like this one. It's very easy, very packable, quite light. Um, so for summer, I like using that to give me a little bit of protection rather than having my full, you know, foul weather gear, which is way too heavy for summer use. Um, one of these and, uh, you know, some quick dry pants and I'm, I'm happy. It just gives me a little bit of extra warmth. You know, if I need to, a, a light fleece underneath if it's that cool. Um, but something light and easy for the summer, you know, cool weather out on the water when it's, when it's windy. And the last thing I'm going to talk about um, are gloves. So sailing gloves are not really, I'm not going to include them in this particular video because the protection that you're getting from sailing gloves is more protection from the boat or from lines protecting you from getting hurt. So I will be doing a video in the future on sailing gear in general. So gloves, harnesses, rigging, jack lines, um, you know, uh, uh, rigging knives, PFDs, that sort of thing. So I will be doing a gear video later and I will include sailing gloves at that point, but sailing gloves, definitely a nice thing to have if you are handling lines, especially if you're racing, um, they will protect your hands from burned, getting burned on the lines. So now that we've covered everything about summer sailing, let's talk about what to do in the cooler, wetter weather. When dealing with cold and wet weather, a layering system is best. It serves two main purposes. First, it helps with temperature regulation, especially in active situations. And secondly, it serves to wick moisture away from the body, keeping you drier and therefore warmer. So let's break it down. We start with a base layer. This is commonly a synthetic like polyester, but can also be silk or merino wool, according to personal preference. Next, we have an insulating layer of wool, fleece, or synthetic insulation like DuPont Serona. Some people might remember Polar Guard and Thinsulate back in the day. Down and cotton, by the way, are both very poor choices for cold, wet weather, as they do not retain any insulating properties when wet. Some people like a mid-layer. This is usually a slightly heavier weight base layer that can be layered over a base layer or used as a heavyweight base layer by itself, 
once again, depending on activity and preference. Finally, we have the outer shell. Most commonly, a waterproof but breathable fabric, Gore-Tex being the most commonly known. But many brands have their own proprietary fabrics that work well too. So the idea is for the system to keep heat in while repelling wind, rain and spray, all the while letting perspiration out, keeping you warm, dry and comfortable. Here we see the layers laid out, starting with a base layer, then the mid layer, the insulating layer, and finally the outer shell. This is an example of a quilted garment using DuPont Serona, a synthetic quick dry insulation. Now let's discuss the four different layers and the various fabrics and materials to choose from. I finished up the last segment talking uh, about sailing gloves and how they weren't really going to be included in this video because they're there to protect your hands from lines and from working lines on the boat. But, you know, thinking about it, they do actually provide sun protection as well. So just wanted to mention that, that they are good to have, even if you don't necessarily need them to protect your hands from the lines, they do offer good sun protection. All right, so enough about the sun. Let's talk now about cooler, wetter weather. So I did a course uh, in college, I did a two-year outdoor rec course years ago. And on day one, the first thing they told us was no cotton. So we were not allowed to wear anything cotton anytime, anywhere on any trip for the whole two years of the program. And to this day, I live by that rule. In cool, wet weather, I do not wear any cotton. Even my underwear is synthetic. I do not wear cotton. Um, it's just bad news. It does not insulate. It maintains the cold, wet layer against your skin, cooling you off. Um, years ago, uh, we were doing an overnight race, the Swiftsure race outside of Victoria or out of Victoria. Um, and we had some pretty rough weather in the night. Uh, we had the crew on the rail. They were getting washed every second or third wave. It was pretty, pretty wet and, uh, and dark. And as you can imagine in racing, you know, people are pretty excited. I was at the back, I was driving the boat really wasn't paying all that much attention. The crew were all supposed to have been advanced level sailors. So I assumed that they knew something about dressing for sailing, um, especially in those kinds of conditions. And one of the crew turns out that became quite hypothermic by two o'clock in the morning because he was wearing um, jeans and a cotton sweatshirt um, under his foul weather gear. And the foul weather gear that he bought or that he was using back in the day um, was not breathable. So on top of that, if he was sweating and working, um, he became quite wet and then he didn't say anything. So I didn't actually find out about it till quite a bit later on. And it could, you know, it was OK. We brought him down down below. And we, we warmed him up, but it could have been a real problem. So no cotton. All right. Earlier in the video, we talked about uh, a layering system. So when you dress for cool, wet weather, you use a layering system. And as you can as you remember from that layering system, there's a base layer, there's a mid layer, there's an insulation layer, and then there's the outer layer. So traditionally, I was taught three layers, the, the, the base layer, the insulation, um, and the outer layer. I found that I have actually sort of drifted into using that mid layer as well. So it does give you a lot of range to control temperature um, as well. The base and mid layers help wick moisture away from your, your body into the outer layers. So your body stays, your skin stays drier, therefore warmer. And one of the things about sailing, it's interesting, is that there are high bursts of activity, depending on what you're doing, and then long idle periods. So you may warm up and then you'll be sitting kind of still and cool um, or cooling off. So really important to understand that layering system and to keep the sweat down and to use, you know, to have wicking underwear as well as um, breathable rain gear, which we're going to talk about at the end of this uh, segment. So this what I'm wearing right now is a Leafa product. It's from Heli Hansen as well. Um, it has a bit of a kind of a weavy feel to it. I've had polypropylene as well or capoline from Patagonia in the past. The polypropylene stuff I've had is quite silky and I, I didn't really like it. I like this, the Leafa stuff. I like this weavy feel uh, personally. Um, it's it fits really well. It needs to fit fairly, fairly close to your body. Um, and the weave does tend to wick moisture away quite nicely. So this is a leaf. It is a polypro. It's a polyester product. It's synthetic. Um, silk is another one that some people use. I have not had much experience with it. Um, and then Merino is a big one these days. So Merino is less scratchy than some wool. I find it still scratches a little bit, um, but there are blends as well that you can get. So give it a shot. Try it out. Try the different uh, base layers and uh, see what works for you. So here we have um, mid layer. 
So this adds a little bit of insulation. Um, it still aids in the wicking. It can be worn by itself. I tend to layer it up. So I've got my base layer and I've got my thin mid layer. This mid layer itself here is like a hundred weight fleece. It's just a very thin insulating layer. Um, and it, it's got these interesting little stirrups here for, for your thumbs, which I personally find quite handy. Some people hate them. I don't mind them at all. I like having them um, to slide through my foul weather gear or other layers, that sort of thing. You can always take them off afterwards. Um, I like them, some people don't. The other thing I do like about this is it's got this nice little hood that's built in. It's a bit of a hoodie. You zip it up and under your foul weather gear, when you put that on, it does add quite a bit of protection and keeps heat up around your head. Um, I mentioned earlier about Leafa and uh, Merino blends. Uh, actually, I meant Merino blends. Um, this is a Leafa Merino blend. It's a little bit heavyweight, heavier weight. They call it a mid-layer. So it's got that Leafa Polypro on the inside and then the Merino on the outside. So again, you can layer it up over a base layer or if you just want to have it as a thicker base layer by itself, you can do that. Um, so lots of room to play with those things. And I've got all kinds of layers and I fine tune the system as needed for my activities. And now we come to the insulation layer. So I'm wearing a wool sweater. It's a crew neck. I don't have to worry about that fleece collar that you sometimes get on some of the fleece pullovers. I find that to me gets in the way. So I prefer to have a crew neck um, under my foul weather gear. Um, it is wool and uh, over the base layers, I don't really feel that it's itchy. So I've been quite happy with this. Um, the other options are the polar fleece or the fleece. This is a Patagonia snap tee that I've had for 20 years and uh, it's incredible. The stuff just lasts forever. So one of the reasons I like Patagonia is the quality is great and the stuff lasts. I'm, I've lost more of these than I can remember, but uh, this one has, has kept up with me for quite a while. This is the collar that I'm talking about. Um, for me, I'm not a big fan of these collars. I'd rather have a wrap um, or something like that, but uh, some people like them. So for me, the sweater works, but the fleece can be a good um, option as well. And the fleece does come in different weights. So once again, you can fine tune that uh, layering system. Another way to fine tune your layering system is with a fleece vest. So this particular vest is actually from West Marine and it's really quite nicely tailored. So it fits really well into a layering system. So you don't have that extra bulk. So if you are gonna be using undergarments, if you can find them tailored, it can definitely help with your with the layering. So again, this is fine tuning it. If you don't need the full weight of a fleece, but it's a little bit cool, a vest is a really good idea. And then you saw earlier in the uh, video, I showed a picture of this um, Heli Hansen uh, hybrid crew jacket. And you can see, I'm not sure if you can see, but again, it's quite nicely tailored so that it fits and, and layers well. The um, insulation in this one is actually called DuPont Serona, which is a polyester. So similar to the Polar Guard, back in the day, it's a quick dry. Um, it will keep you warm when wet. And uh, it does give you quite a bit more insulation, especially if you're sitting around the cockpit, um, you know, on watch, that sort of thing, and you're not being all that active. It's really nice to have that under that last layer, which we're going to talk about next. And that brings us to the outer layer. I'm going to do the outer layer in two shots, in two segments. I'm just going to talk about the bottoms or the pants, which are bib pants. They come up quite high. You can see they come up quite high at the back as well. These are the Heli Hansen Egeer Offshore pants. They are uh, three layer Gore-Tex. Uh, they have padded knees, uh, pretty heavy duty stuff. Uh, for being out in heavy weather offshore, they're great. Um, they're fairly still new, they're quite crispy. I haven't even really gotten dirty yet, but so far I've been very happy with them. I do find that I will sometimes just wear the bibs by themselves uh, because they do come up quite high and they do keep me quite warm. So sometimes when I need the extra, extra sort of mobility, um, I will wear the bibs by themselves. Um, they're quite nice big range of, of bibs. They are breathable. They're Gore-Tex. So definitely look for something breathable. Look for something, you know, bibs, nice pockets. Um, there's all kinds of them. There's Henry Lloyd, there's Musto, there's uh, Douglas, uh, there's Gill. There's all kinds of them. So take a look online and see what uh, you come up with. Uh, Henry Lloyd has about four different lines of, of, of uh, heavy weather or I mean a foul weather gear. So go ahead and see what you've got out there and pick something that works for you. Next, we're going to talk about the jacket. Pretty heavy duty, once again, some of the features that you'll find in a jacket like this are neoprene or uh, rubberized cuffs to keep water from running down your arms. It's got a reinforced sort of cordura seat for where you're sitting so it doesn't wear out quite as long. The zippers are waterproof. It's got this high um, collar 
um, a, a very visible glow, day glow hood so if you do go overboard you can be seen and then when you do have it all cinched up you've got this piece here that comes across as well. You'll also notice that this particular jacket has Solas reflector patches on it. So these are some of the features you look for in a heavier duty jacket but again look for something that you can layer up with that's waterproof, breathable and has the features you need for the kind of sailing you do. And finally we come to the accessorizing, the accessories. So uh, what we call toques in Canada, wool caps, um, something like this. This is a synthetic, it's a bit of a woolly polyester blend, you can get fleece caps, you can get balaclavas, whatever. You can get the hoodies like I had earlier. So something to keep your head warm. Um, I always laugh when people say you lose 60% of your body heat through your head. I don't know what the actual number is. 60% um, of my entire body heat through my head seems a little bit extreme, but you hear these numbers sort of thrown around. Definitely you do lose heat through the, your neck and your head. So keeping your head covered up definitely goes a long way to keeping your whole body warm. That is for sure. The other thing I like personally um, is this Gore-Tex hat. I actually bought this Gore-Tex hat when I was in college in 1990. It is Gore-Tex, it's one of the early Gore-Tex, it's made by Outdoor Research, and it has been an amazing rain hat. They still make it, I think they call it the sombrero or something like that, but Outdoor Research still makes these Gore-Tex rain hats, and this has absolutely been amazing in the rain. I have spent I have hours and hours of standing in the rain with this hat. So that for me comes highly recommended. We were talking gloves earlier and how um, the gloves I was talking about were meant for protecting your hands from injury on the boat. Um, there are these little finger or fingerless gloves that uh, are available and they're actually neoprene so they will help your hands stay warm i find of all the gloves out there i've tried ski gloves i've tried fleece gloves uh, the only gloves really that work especially if you're holding on to that cold uh, wheel at the helm for a long period of time um, the only gloves really that have kept my hands warm at all are um, the sort of uh, you know three mil two mil reef gloves or wetsuit gloves so wetsuit gloves is really the only thing i have found that works and as well you can get if you want and get the little packs the little heat packs just be careful you don't burn yourself with them but you can add those you know in areas inside your fingers and things like that i've never used mitts myself i've gotten away with it the other thing is a lot of the foul weather gear do have hand warmer pockets with fleece in them i do tend to, to use those a lot um, as well so on to footwear so standard rubber boots um, are you know, are the sort of the, the go-to for most people. I personally don't like them. I find them cold. I find that they don't breathe and my feet get sweaty. So for years now, I've been using um, a leather option. These I got are, are Sperry's. They're probably 15 or 20 years old. Unfortunately, the sole has become very, very hard and it's actually quite slippery, so quite dangerous. There's no way of resoling them. It's unfortunate because I love these boots. They fit like slippers, no word of a lie. Uh, they're insulated, they're super warm, um, and the only problem now is that I've lost the traction because the rubber has gotten hard over over time. So uh, that's unfortunate. I still have them. I can't seem to get myself to get rid of them, but I love them so much. But, they, and Sperry hasn't to replace them with anything. They weren't cheap. When I did buy them, I bought them at West Marine and I thought they were at $39.95 or something like that. I thought I was getting the deal of the century. They were actually $239 or something, but I still bought them and I have absolutely no regrets. There are quite a few leather boots out there. I've seen some online, Musto and a few others. Um, I've just recently got these from Gull and uh, I haven't actually, they're brand new. Uh, they're not quite as comfortable as those other Sperry's, but um, they're not broken in yet either. Um, they do look really quite well made. They've got nice rubber so uh, soles on them. Hopefully they won't dry out and get slippery. Uh, they're not quite as insulated either, but uh, you know that you can fix with some socks and that sort of thing. So talking about socks, um, again, back to that layering system. So these are merino wool socks. And typically what I'll do is I'll have a polypro sock liner, again, to wick that moisture out and then have these merino, stretchy merino sort of, they've got a bit of spandex or lycra in them to give them some shape. But again, um, that wool with the base layer um, and then the boots as an outer layer. And those boots happen to be uh, waterproof and breathable. So if you're if you spend a lot of time out there and a lot of time out in the wet and the cold, really think about getting one of those breathable um, leather boots. Now, I think 
uh, dill does make a breathable. I've looked online. I have seen some Gore-Tex uh, Gore boots out there um, from D Douglas Gill, I believe. Um, if I can find them, I'll put them down in the description below. And that's the end of the uh, layering system. I actually had quite a bit of fun doing this video and uh, I hope to see you in the next one. New episodes go up every second Wednesday at 6 p.m. See you next time when we talk about coming about or tacking. Thanks for watching. Until then, I wish you all fair winds and following seas.